Hi, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Tian Ping Chao from the Jensen General Hospital, Taipei, Taiwan. And this is the case presentation, section six. Uh, the moderators are Dr. Satoru Otsuji and myself. And the panelists are Dr. Saurabh Ago and Dr. Mohammed Shafiger and Dr. Rama Patwari and Dr. Jampu. And I would like to introduce our first speaker. The first speaker, is Dr. Mamu Hassan Khan, and he's from uh, Evercare Hospital, Dakar, uh, Bangladesh. And his uh, title is the Nightmare in Cat's Lab. The um, patient is the uh, real player. Uh, Dr. Khan, please uh, start your presentation. And the title of my presentation is Nightmare in Cat Lab. Patience is the real player. As a fellow, I'm presenting the case on behalf of Professor Dr. Shabuddin Talukdar and Professor Dr. A. Kiyo Nizasar. Our patient, Mr. K.A.A., 61 years, diabetic, hypertensive, admitted as a case of acute inferior ST elevated ACS. ECG showed acute MI inferior with anterior ischemia. ECHO revealed uh, severe LV systolic dysfunction with LV ejection fraction 30% with regional one motion abnormality and one motion scoring index was 1.41. Angiogram showed triple vessel coronary artery disease, which includes RCA 100% occluded from proximal segment, LAD 70 to 80%, multiple lesions at proximal to mid segment, and circumflex had 60% concentric plaque at proximal segment. Recommended for primary PCI to RCA and stage PCI to LED. Syntax scoring was uh, done and it showed it was high syntax with uh, having 27. Patient and uh, family were not keen on undergoing coronary artery bypass grafting as we uh, gave the uh, option first for CABG, but they opted for PCI. So, uh, materials used was uh, right femoral root being used, EBU 3.56 French uh, guide catheter taken with uh, floppy wear, and pre dilatation balloon was taken uh, 1.25 into 10 millimeter and 2 millimeter, 2 into 10 millimeter. Stent used was a 4 into 35 cylinders eluting this for RCA. And how it was uh, treated, the lesion was crossed, pre-dilated, then suction, after suction, stent was positioned and inflated in RCA. And after successful PCI, it showed RCA was well revascularized with distal TB3 flow. But during procedure, patient became restless. He got seated twice. Patient was restrained. Anesthesiologist was involved. Patient was sedated and procedure completed. But the sheet removal, the nightmare begins. The arterial sheet been broken down and the shaft of the sheet remains inside the body. Now what? Surgery or intervention? Both teams were involved. Left uh, route been taken, JR6 French guide catheter and Vascular access sheet was taken at 7 French and 14 French, where it's been taken Teremo 0.035 inch in 260 cm exchange web and a floppy web. And Andra 20 millimeter snare also been taken. So, remain into the superficial femoral artery. In my right panel, we can see the retractor. Here, the surgeon team involved to uh, tackle the broken shape, but 
they failed. We tried it again, again and again, with the floppy, where, but we failed, failed, but finally, with the long exchange where, we were able to enter the broken sheet shaft. After that, we took the snare, hold it the uh, hold the uh, broken sheet shaft with the exchange wire and pull it pulled it with the whole assemble to retract the broken sheet but in the right panel we can see just before extracting from inside the body, we again trapped near the hub of the ship. We exchanged a ship to 14 French ship and finally we succeeded. This is the broken ship of the body, the retrieval. So, points of discussion are, where was the problem? What measures could be undertaken to prevent it? Was there any way to retrieve the broken sheet in the first instant? Was there any way to prevent it in going further deep? So, from uh, the presentation, that my take-home message is, complications are the lessons for the interventionist. Complications management is a great challenge. Planning is essential. Perseverance is mandatory. Need to have all kinds of hardware in the shelf. Last but not the least, patient must get the priority above all. Although I have completed the slide within six minutes, but the total procedure took about five and a half hours. Thank you, thank you for your patience hearing. And again, sorry for the technical interruption. Yeah, and a very good case. I would like to uh, proceed uh, the next case. So uh, is Dr. Dr. Kider available? So if Dr. Kider is not available yet, I would like to uh, introduce the third speaker. The third speaker is Dr. Uh, Satoshi Suzuki. Uh, and Dr. Suzuki is from uh, Sakura Bash uh, Watanabe Hospital, Japan. Uh, his title today is the tip detection method adapted for non-CTO compensation during IVA's uh, guided coronary intervention. Uh, Dr. Suzuki, oh, can you uh, start your uh, presentation? Thank you for joining us. Can you see my slide? Yes, I, we can, yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about tip detection method for non-CTO complex region. I don't have any potential conflicts of interest. My presentation has three parts. First, I'll give a brief introduction to tip detection method. We reported the tip detection method is very useful technique for treating chronic total occlusion region. To recognize the wire rotation three dimensionally using IBUS, Second operator moves the IBUS return back and the force movement of the transducer. First operator manifests guide wire according to second operator's advice. And next, I'd like to describe our recent case. 89 years old man with hypertension was admitted to our hospital due to chest pain. He felt chest pain during walking over 100 meter. Electrocardiogram, ultrasound cardiogram, and laboratory test indicated within normal limit. Coronary angiography was shown here. You can see severe stenosis at the segment seven in the LAD. Posterior descending artery had the collateral to the LAT. 
Firstly, we cross the path to guide wire to the diagonal branch because it was very difficult to cross the LED. IBUS imaging was pulled back from diagonal branch. LED was appeared at five o'clock. Uh, this is LED and opposite side, this is LCX. On IBUS imaging at the entrance of the LED, we performed coronary angiography. Angiography imaging informed that the entrance of the LED was closer than we expected. We saw to cross the LED was very difficult. So uh, we decided to perform tip detection method near the entrance of the LED. Then can we recognize the guide wire three dimensionally? We usually bend guide wire to make fast curve short rings, 45 angle degree bending, and second curve long rings, gentle angle. So the tip of the guide wire is shown as a straight line on the IBUS imaging. And the shaft of the guide wire is shown as a point on IBUS image. In this case, the entrance of the LED was rotated at five o'clock. So uh, we rotate the guide, second guide wire was rotated to direct at five o'clock. Since the tip of the second guide wire was directed at five o'clock, we advanced the second guide wire without rotation. Uh, we could confirm the second guide wire entered the LED on IBUS image and then advanced the second guide wire using angiography image. So we can, we could cross the guide wire to the LED. We performed the barrel angioplasty and stent implantation. Finally, TIMI3 flow was gotten. How do you consider the situation when you can't or difficult to cross the guide wire to branches? How do you do to cross the guide wire to branch in such cases? Would you like to use tip detection method? Tip detection method informed us of the branch rotation, tip direction and the shaft rotation of the guide wire. We can recognize the region and the guide wire three-dimensionally. We can understand the reason why the guide wire can't enter the branch. Is the entrance wrong? Is it not enough to bend the wire? Tip detection method is not only useful for treating chronic total occlusion region, but also open vessel PCI. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Suzuki. Very good case. Uh, any comment or uh, question from the, our panelists and moderators? Uh, good evening. I am uh, Dr. Shopikuraman Patwari uh, from Bangladesh. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for nice presentation. And uh, this is the uh, 3D uh, reconstruction of teeth by the IBAS guided uh, this is procedure. The which type of uh, that is I was uh, transducer used for this procedure? In case not to use I was the question. That is uh, which type of transducer you use? That is one is the Navy uh, that is transducer. Uh, which type of transducer used for detection of the tip? Do you mean which company of the I was? Uh, yes. Um, our hopes are using IBUS uh, thermal company. Uh, usually we use the, uh, that is transducer uh, for the IBUS. Mm. Uh, it is uh, used for the detection of the shaft and the lesion morphology 
that is anatomy of the vessels but uh, it is their special form of uh, that is ibus uh, which is used for this tip detection this is not a special this maybe this ibus is a terrible uh, uh, boson yes yes this ibus is uh, uh, usually we used it has a uh, uh, pullback system Dr. Suzuki, uh, this is Dr. Pusam Shah. Hi. I would like to know which wire you use. Wire, the, the, the wire you use. Oh, wire. I, uh, we used wire Sion, uh, Asahi Intec. Okay. So, uh, so in this IMS guide, tip, de tip detection technology, uh, because some wire is very difficult to maneuver. So, um, what what's your suggestion for the primary uh, wire uh, to use uh, in this technology? Uh, I mean, I mean, not all the wire is very easy to maneuver. I think, it, I, think it depend, I think it depends on the uh, region. Mm -hmm. If the region is very calcic, the fiber uh, calcic plug, we can use. We have to use a more stiff wire, but uh, in his case. Uh, uh, it is not. Uh, uh, we can we can see the entry clearly by the ibus. So we don't have to use uh, any stiff wire in his case. I think. Yes, in my case, it uh, open vessel, not CTO your case. So we use uh, strong wire. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. So because time limitation, we better close the, this case. If we have uh, uh, the, uh, extra time at the end of the, this, this section, we can uh, discuss more. So, mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Otsuji, could you uh, introduce uh, the, the next uh, speakers? Okay, okay. So, the next case also the similar to the previous case, Dr. Tanaka. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Kota Tanaka from Sakurabash Watan Hospital in Japan. And I will talk about this title. A case is 84 years old woman. She underwent cardiac barbell surgery. Two weeks after operation, her blood pressure became unstable. We underwent PCI for LED CTO to improve her hemodynamics. Preoperative CAG showed occlusion in the proximal part of the LED. Chip injection from the microcaster reveals the CTO in the proximal part of the LED at the bifurcation site with the DX. XDR supported by the Corsair entered the CTO region in the LED. IBUS showed that there was a plaque between the root of the guide wire in the LED and the entrance of the DX. In the shema, it was like this. At the just distal of the CTO, there was a connection between the entrance of the DX and the LED. Therefore, we moved on to the chip detection method. Here, I will explain the chip detection method. Firstly, we insert it into uh, we insert the IBUS to the first wire in sub intima Then we manual move the IBUS transducer using the pullback function in the seas. It enables you to the to evaluate the position of the shaft and the chip and the target of the second wire within the CTO region in real time. This is a video of manual manipulation of the experiment model. In this way, chip detection is uh, possible by the more moving IBUS in small steps. The IBUS image the uh, observation of the sheath, uh, observation of the sheath, uh, and the chip and the guide wire with actually moving the transducer back and forth. In this case, in the, this image, you can understand it needs to be rotated the counter clock in order to pass through into the true lumen. This method is called the chip detection method. Case, 
We started the IBUS guiding wiring using the tip detection method. While back and forth moving the transducer, we recognize, uh, re recognize the position between the shaft and the chip and the target of the second wire. You can see that second wire is still in the CTO and the chip in the positioning at the direction of the DX. While check the IBUS, we advance the second wire and you can see that the chip of the second wire is a four o'clock direction. Therefore, we were able to the advance the second guide wire into the true lumen by turn, turning the counter clock. As a result, we have success in the wire cross to DX. IBUS was performed the DX in detail IBUS revealed that there was a plug between the guide wire in the DX and the guide wire in the LED. There was a plug between the guide wire in the DX and the LED and connection to the distal part of the separate of the DX and the LED. If we, are, we have dilated the region in this situation, the plug shift would have occlusion in the branch. We performed the parallel wire technique and the reverse wire technique from DX, but guide wire could not be passed. Therefore, we moved on to the chip detection method again. And the second guide wire could be advanced to the LED main branch through this low route by turning the chip into the counter clocks. The stent was implanted only the LED main branch and the normal integrated broad flow was achieved both in the LED and the DX branch. Discussion point, firstly, if guide wire could not be passed through the DX branch, would you perform the parallel wire technique or reverse wire technique? Next, is there any other better solution in this situation? Last, would you like to use the chip detection method? Conclusion, we recently reported the efficacy of the tip detection method during the IBUS guide wiring in CTO region. We firstly showed that the chip detection method was useful not only during the CTO PCI, but also during non-CTO PCI. Visualize of the 3D imaging enable accurately navigation of the guide wire ensues routes whether it was difficult for the guide wire to pass. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much for a nice case. Any comment or question? Uh, that was a well, very well executed uh, tip detection. My only question is when you are, you are moving the IBUS in the subtimal region, does it cause some injury to the blood vessel? When, because you know your wire is sub and you are put the IVAS catheter well into that uh, channel. So will it cause some injury over there, a perforation or something of that type? Dr. Tanaka, yeah. I think the IVAS position is still intima, not sub-intima. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, this case uh, is... Dr. Boy, the IVAS catheter is intima, not sub-intima. If the okay. IVAS go into the sub-intima, I think the yeah. wire manipulation is very difficult to enter yeah. the uh, true room. Yeah, so correct. I think that its uh, uh, method is uh, useful. Little if, above the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Little, little behind, yes. Yeah, so yeah. It, because uh, when advancing the uh, IBUS, we sometimes direct the vessel with a small hmm. balloon. So if yes. the uh, ballooning, to the sub intima, the yeah. very huge hematoma occurs. Yes, yes, exactly. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Other comment or questions? Yes, Dr. which Dr. type Dr. of guide were used to cross the CTU? 
Panos guard were used to yeah. cross the city. Guard wire. That is uh, second uh, guard wire. Guard wire is a deep load. Yes, bro. Confense. A city in the uh, confense. Uh, I use. Use Conquest Pro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dr. Tanaka, I would like to know what's the minimal requirement for the tip lens so you can see a line in the iris. Hmm. What's the minimal lens? Hmm. Lens. Oh, tip lens. <laughs> uh, tip lens. Uh, <laughs> tip lens is uh, 80, mini, 80 millimeter. 18? Uh, no, no, 8 millimeter. 8 millimeter. Yeah. At, at short, short chip and uh, the, uh, yeah, pullback system, anti or IBAS, okay. uh, by thermal. So you can detect uh, 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 wire tip if the wire tip length is 8 millimeter or more. Uh, tip oh, yeah. length. If the tip length is less than 8 millimeter, you cannot detect the tip, wire tip, by the IBAS. Yes, this is my question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker. So, next speaker, Dr. Sashpraha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Okay. I will start my slide. Um, yeah, please, please show your slide. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, moderators, panelists, and I'm Tineke Sasipapa. I am an International Karuti Fellow from Rama Tibeti Hospital, Maidan University, Bangkok, Thailand, Sodi <laughs> Uh It's my great honor for me to be here to present my case, The Hidden Highway. And I will tell you later what the name comes from in the, in the presentation, because the time of time, I will just play into the case, I have nothing to, to disclose. Uh, this is a 53 years old man. He has a uh, diabetes presenting with uh, typical angina for three months. He had worked out for exercise research report positive from a referral hospital. His echo was in normal remit. And then he was referred for COVID angel camp to a hospital. Uh, let's start with the uh, right COVID angel camp via uh, right radio artery approach. Uh, using a just skin right catheter. As you can see in the clip, uh, there is no significant stenosis of the RCA. But may, you may notice the uh, collateral via septal branches to the LED here at the last two or three frames. And then we confirm by the just skin left catheter in case to the left coronary system. And the left coronary angel can show the total occlusion, as you can see in the AP cranium here at the proximal to mid LED. And we confirmed by the spider view here that you can see the total occlusion, which may be as chronic total occlusion or CTO as a proximal to mid LED after given the diagonal branches, as you can see. First, we uh, want to, we, thought, want, we plan to, to do um, some injection to the right query artery to review the CTO lesion here, as you can see at the arrows. But, after we look closer, uh, we can notice something that uh, the collateral was actually come from the uh, corner branch of the RCA. Then we uh, change the plan and engage to the uh, corner artery branches of the RCA using a closer micro catheter and selectively inject to this branch and then do a summonary Again. As you can see, that's nicely viewed uh, CTO lesion here. It was uh, much shorter than we have thought before. Then we use the uh, filter FCY passed to the LED assisted by the 5 cross microcatheter here. And then we uh, pre dilated with the semi compound balloon 1.5 millimeters. And then this is a follow angiogram. As you can see, uh, after we pass the CTO, we now face with the, an, another enemy, which was the bifurcation lesion, which is a Medina 111 classification. And you can see in the picture here, you can see 111. Then we pass the wire to the 
Dagon of Run with that Xiong Blue Bar, and then uh, Valentine with uh, Raja Balloon, a 2.5 balloon. And then we did an I was to for uh, planning to do a verification PCI. And I was sure that at the proximal LED are uh, measure about 3.5 millimeters and at the mid LED was 3.0. And uh, that and the diagonal was 2.75 here, as you see in the IWAS. So we decided to do the kilo technique here because as we thought that this is true verification lesion. And because of the, the distal main bus size of the vessel is roughly equal to the side of the side plan. So we uh, decided to do a QLOS technique here. Then we pass the stent to the side band first with the synergy stent. Uh, as you can notice something uh, maybe weird here because we put, a, we place a quite long stent in the proximal branch here because uh, the synergy has a, for connector start at the two uh, for connector at the two proximal start and the other part had two connector at two connectors. So if uh, we put too short, maybe maybe we encounter with the difficulty in wiring and open slot in the in the ladder. So uh, we deploy this first stance here to the side branch and then we do a pot with a 3.5 balloon as measured in the IWAS. And then we uh, recrossing the Y as in clock technique to the LED. And then we open the slide with the O balloon, a 2.5 semi M balloon. Then we put the stent to the main branch with the with synergy stent 2.0 O balloon. And then we uh, optimize, I mean, then we recross the Y and optimize the stent with uh, NC balloon to a uh, kissing balloon. And actually, of course, we do a pot, final pot with a 3.5 balloon again. And this is my final angel gun here. Actually, we do an IWAS too, and the IWAS show a good position and no any ex and expansion. So I have some discussion points for you. Uh, first is, uh, the, what, what do you think about the optimal bifurcation technique in this bifurcation case? And what kind of stand do you prefer in the QNOS technique? So uh, let's summarize our uh, for our, our case uh, about the uh, learning points. First, uh, to inject via microcatheter to connect plant to make the carotenoid to the LED is, uh, I think this is important in this case, uh, is to make the, uh, the CPO clearly. And second is the I was to use an IWAS guide by application, PCI. And the third one is, I think we, we should know, truly understand our stance. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for showing us a good case. So any discussion and uh, comment or question? So in this case, uh, so what do your indication for two stand technique? Uh, we have, yeah. we thought that um, because the sideband is quite big, in yeah. near area, uh, and uh, uh, there is significant stenosis of the side branch, mm -hmm. and it's involved over five meter of the osteolesion from the IWAS. So we decided to do a two stent bifurcation technique. Yeah. Not depending on the length of the side branch. We sometimes use a single stent, single stent and a, a kissing balloon for the region oh. of the short length of side branch stenosis. But in this case, I'm 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 sorry I miss your uh, uh, the lunch right? Yeah, not so long. <laughs> <laughs> not so long, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, Doctor Goya, do you have any comment? So for the I I, I think I think uh, it's it's a very big uh, side branch and. I agree that you know a two stent strategy rather than a provisional stenting should be uh, the method of choice. Uh, the only uh, uh, issue being that uh, you know uh, I, I personally would have pre-dilated the whole uh, system more aggressively because sometimes you you get stuck in these kind of complex bifurcations. 
if if you don't you you really pre dilate the all the uh, the main branch and the side branch optimally so that you get a a good excellent result but i think uh, it, it was it was a very good result what you got at the end thank you for your comments actually we we pre dilate the the side branch too but i skip it to give that uh skip the procedure because of the time thank you because of this diagonal is a very big has very big territory so we give the diagonal in this case so the, i agree the two cent technique mm -hmm. but recently the some data published from the european hajana uh how about uh, uh dk kirot technique <laughs> Yeah. I don't. I don't know exactly, but uh, you 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 uh, apply the original kilo technique. Sometimes uh, some investigator recommend the DK crash. How about the DK crash in this case? Yeah, especially because the angle of the diagonal. Uh, looking at the angle of the diagonal yeah. decay crush may, may be a, a, a good option keeping a stent in led mm -hmm. put the put the diagonal stent first and then you crush it with the led stent mm -hmm. that that that's al always a good option and yeah, decay crush is a good uh, also a good uh, method to, to treat this kind of lesion but uh, but the uh, uh, profile and and the uh, Curot technique is your plain procedure or it uh, is just a provisional uh, procedure. So you plan the uh, uh, Curot technique uh, in, at the beginning, right? Yes, we plan to do at, at the beginning. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I missed some of the your slides. You stand, I, I, I think you stand, you stand the LD first and then diagonal, right? So if you follow- uh, We stand at, uh, at the diagonal first. Oh yeah. Okay. First. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is uh, you, uh, the you, no, no more way that uh, we do. Yeah. Oh yes. Diagonal first. Sorry, I, I sent too, too fast. <laughs> so any other question or comment? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move thank to you. last speaker or next speaker. Maybe to one speaker. Did you? didn't show. I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Panja, Manatosh Panja. Okay, please, you are yeah. show your case. So, respected moderator, yeah. present and ladies men. Yes. I am from, I am Dr. Manatosh Panja, the Calcutta, India. Yes. So, this is my interesting case, huge aneurysm in case of a drug eluding stain has a very late complications. Actually, I conducted our study that the adult trial aggressive diagnosis of restenosis. We conducted from Toronto, 26 country participated in the program. I also principally investigated from India. So I don't one of the most complications I've taken it huge aneurysm from that study. Next. So there is no conflict of interest in my study. So 58 years, diabetes, non-hypertension, ex-smokers, presented with anterior marker infarction the first week of August 2004. A patient thrombolyzed and managed conservatively because patient came on late, discharge after 10 days with antiplale, nitrate, acinimeter, beta blocker. And after discharge patient, again, the complaint, the chest pain, after three weeks of discharge, and we advised for angiography in early November, angio shows, and the 90% with thrombus. So this is the LED about 90% block with thrombus, and continuing it. Yes, yes. And ultimately, as the patient diabetes, so 2005, we are given the stain, the cypher stain that time available with us, and initially balloon inflations, cipher 3 into 18 millimeter deployed at the 14 atmospheric pressures and ultimate final result grade 3 to flow. As the patient has got the uh, thrombus, so I continue, used to continue the low molecular heparin 
five days along with antiplatelet, aspirin, covidogrel, atorvais inhibitors, beta blocker, and anti-diabetic medicines. And patient discharge after seven days without any complications with that medicines. Interestingly, pre-procedure uh, uh, pre-procedure PTCA HCF you high 10 nanogram per liter and after the procedure it was HCF was the 12. Now you see after putting this stain the appreciable result and of course there is approximately distal little lactasia and after 14 months patient developed low grade fever, abdominal pain which he, of course is resolved within two to three days, subsequently developed the pain chest and character of the pain is dull in nature, had dragging character, occasionally pain relieved by the servitate. Anyhow, the decision we taken for re angio on December 2005 after 14 months and of course patient was glycemic control and renal status also normal. This is the result after 14 months. You see, proximal end of the cipher stain, huge aneurysm. Again, the proximal part of the LED disease about now 90% block, 90, 85 to 90% block. So disease progression of the proximal part and ectasia on the circumference of the increase. Now what to do? So patient, ultimately that uh, boost, stand was taken. Therefore, the from the proximal of the stain, the aneurysm developed and there is a proper expansion, ex extension of the cipher stain. There are no broken or the fracture of any, any part of the stain. And ultimately, you know, after doing the angioplasty, patient want the good result. Nobody want the complication during the procedure or after the procedure, nobody want some any other complication. Nobody want the catastrophic stain thrombosis, fracture of the stain and the aneurysm. Anyhow, in my conclusions, huge coronary aneurysm in case of drug eluding stain, in my case, is due to infection, inflammation, because of reuse of the guide wire and guide catheter. Supportive evidence of the patient presented the fever and high HCRP, finally patient managed by the CAVG. Of course, we cannot exclude the uh, polymer or drug hypersensitivity trauma for the genesis of the huge aneurysm. I used to convince that this patient due to infection, inflammation, to reuse of the guide wire and guide catheter. Thank you very much, patient Harry. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice case. Any comment or question? I have uh, one question. Yes. It is, it is uh, after 14 months, so if it is due to the infection or reuse materials, it may occur within a short period of time. And as, as it is patient present with fever, it may be the mycotic aneurysm in the proximal part of the LED. A drug looting stent, it also causes the aneurysm by different mechanism, as well as due to the high pressure inflation, due to the intimal trauma may also causes the aneurysm. Yeah, there is a three types of aneurysm is occur type one, type two, and three. But it is after fourteen months. Uh, it is due to the reuse materials, or it is genovo infection that is uh, in the latter one. It is due to the uh, uh, that is uh, septicemia or other causes that causes the infection. This very intelligent question. The same question arises in my mind. Because I try to convince because patient has the HCRP persistently maintained high from beginning. So that is and ultimately presented a low grade fever later on, an abdominal pain. So I bound to think most likely the infection and inflammation. Of course, I cannot uh, exclude the hypersensitive drug relation of polymer and trauma also. But to me, it is most likely infection and inflammation. And ultimately, we've done the surgery is done because the progression of disease is a proximal part of the LED and some ectasia of the circumflex. Of course, some one disease is diagonal. Patients also refuse for the further intervention. Ultimately, surgery done. Now, the 17-year follow-up patient doing well. He regularly coming 
to me there is no problem at all my second question is whether any microorganism is detected uh, from the blood culture and, uh, no. and can you detect uh, this one by the cover stent or not no actually in this thought where put the cover stent or not but blood culture negative the fungus study is not done that time so anyhow the if i my uh, afraid that if i give the another stain from the proxim part if from the limb main stem to the whole entire stain again the question of restenosis may come or the chance of the extension the infection inflammation process may be there i explain everything to the cross and corner to my patient so that is why patient refuse uh, he better to his his option is better to do the surgery because the patient poor patient cannot do re repeatedly time and the plasty again record the surgery not the question so therefore ultimately the surgeon is a very very he is very eager to take the patient and give the graft to led and another graft to the d1 big size d1 and he also given the graft to the circumflex also because ectasia and some progression of disease ostium the circumflex some extent so patient do well 17 years follow up now uh, dr panja for why while the surgery was done did the surgeon consider ligating after putting the lima to led ligating the proximal led because uh, that aneurysm otherwise the flow continues it could rupture uh, in the future yeah that is my same i asked my surgeon that if you doing the surgery if there is chance of rupture he so because we are giving the supply of the blood distally they have a slow problem from led and i told him patient get the pain the, the huge aneurysm may clog the microthrombi the microthrombi go to the distal vessel may contain one pain and surgeon told me the because they not getting the integrate flow normally which may happen but because of uh, my blood is getting from the lima so that cases patient may not get any embolism will be prevented some extent so patient doing well that is i i i convince the surgeon uh, imagination is correct now no pain after that at all no symptoms no fever everything doing well only i continue the after surgery we continue the antibiotic the two weeks aggressively judicially okay thank you very much okay thank you so dr tao yes so the second presenter is now on the screen oh yeah yes <laughs> look so hi yeah Doctor Ki Kita. Yes. Yeah. So, so Doctor uh, Kader, can you uh, start your presentation? Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. I'm sorry for the sun on my face. Um, when you need the sun, you don't find it, and you're okay. But when you present, you you find the sun there. But uh, okay. So uh, this is a, a case of um, a lady, 75 years old. Uh, who had an AVR and single venous graft to uh, obtuse marginal branch in 2018. She had severe aortic stenosis at that time. Postoperatively, she had a, a atrial fibrillation. And also she has a history of a TIA, type 2 di diabetes, and hypertension. A few months following the, uh, the operation, uh, she felt exertional chest pain and shortness of her breath. And she was seen by the cardiac rehab team and they started on, um, on um, uh, anti-angernal medication, but that didn't improve her symptoms. And then uh, she uh, presented to the hospital in March 2020 with a known STEMI, and therefore she had a coronary angiography, um, which I will show the images there. Uh, so basically, I was expecting that her venous graft was, uh, uh, was occluded. Uh, I took shots of the right coronary artery, which was unobstructed, and I'm just showing the shots of the left coronary system. I will work there. Okay, so so this is I I, I went straight away with the guide, uh, um, assuming that the um, venous graft was uh, was blocked, and I was hoping to treat her native um, OM branch disease, and that was the first shot, uh, as you can see. There is a severe narrowing of the osteal uh, left main stem. Now, 
just to orient you here, uh, so you can see the graft stenosis as, as is shown there. And there was also the original uh, native uh, marginal branch stenosis there and the severe left main stenosis there. And then the next shot, um, you can see the, there, um, uh, the, the flow in the left coronary system significantly compromised and the patient become hemodynamically unstable. And we had to call the, um, the crash team and the anesthetic team and they did intubate the patient and the patient somehow um, uh, stabilized, uh, but she was very hypotensive. Just going to the next slide here. So um, I changed the catheter because the, uh, the first catheter, gut catheter was an EBU35. I changed that to uh, JL3.5, uh, six French and I changed the uh, access also to the femoral access. And luckily, as you can see in these images, that the wire crossed the left main into the left circumflex. And then following that, um, it was um, straightforward, basically um, balloon angioplasty and then stenting to the left main uh, stent. Patient uh, immediately uh, following PCI to the, to the left main um, uh, hemodynamically improved. Uh, and then I even managed to do an IVAS study um, to see uh, the, the left main and also the, the, uh, the OM branch um, um, vessels criteria. And then I stented the, the left main, optimized the stent and also stented the left circ and also the area where the anastomosis is. as you can see there. So I looked into the literature about uh, the left main uh, stenosis following an operation. And basically uh, it is not um, very rare. It's, um, uh, it's called iatrogenic coronary osteoma stenosis. Uh, it is known, but uh, as I said, it is uncommon complication of aortic valve uh, replacement. It's first recognized in 1970. Uh, the incidence is, is as small as uh, 0 0.3 and in some places 3.4 percent and it is likely to be uh, due to an injury to the coronary ostia caused by the catheters used to inject cardioplegic, uh, cardioplegic agents uh, via the coronary ostium but it, it doesn't happen to every patient there is some genetic predisposition to the uh, to a pathologically increase uh, Pro proliferative uh, repair after the arterial injury. Uh, the presentation usually is uh, with angina uh, or ACS presentation within six months of the aortic valve surgery. Uh, and there could be myocardial schema, as I said, infarction or LV failure or arrhythmias. Um, in the past, redo CABG was, uh, was the treatment of choice, but nowadays uh, PCI is an alternative um, uh, method of, uh, of treatment, particularly in hemodynamically stable patients. Uh, and the treatment uh, of um, ICOS with the drug looting stent has excellent immediate and midterm outcomes. However, the long-term outcomes is not, is not known. Now this patient has actually did very well following the procedure. She was uh, very stable, uh, her symptoms of angina has, um, has all disappeared. Uh, and she's doing very well despite her age. Thank you very much, and I'm happy for any questions. Yeah, very good case and very uh, educational case. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have uh, enough time for a discussion because the time is uh, is almost ended. So, uh, Dr. Otsuji, could you uh, make a, a closing remark? Okay, thank you very much, all uh, presenters. So, I... Uh, we, I really appreciate uh, uh, your uh, 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 attendance uh, this session. Thank you very much. Actually, I want to uh, one question to the last <laughs> uh, presenter, which is what is the mechanism of the LMD stenosis? Thrombosis? Okay, he cannot 
he cannot hear me. Sorry, no, is that is that the question to me? Is it about the left main stenosis? Yes. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Well. Mm. Yeah, the, the 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 literature says that it is usually caused by an injury caused by the catheters which is used during the the, the surgery. Uh, they use the inject cardioplegic uh, drugs uh, to stop the heart during the operation, and the the manipulation of the catheters injures the ostium of either the left main stem or the right coronary artery. Uh, this is the most likely. Uh, it doesn't happen to all the people. But there is some genetic predisposition of how the artery reacts to that injury. In some people, there is more proliferation than the others, and that's why they develop stenosis. Because the stent left main is very low position. Stent frame maybe the interfere the left main ostium, and the size of the barsav is very small. In the in this yeah. your, your case, so the barsav size barsava. Barsalva size is very small. Sinus Sorry, of what? Valsalva, yeah. Oh, the sinus of Valsalva was very small. Very small. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, I mean, I mean, it is, yeah, I agree with that. And, um, and we discussed this case with the surgeons um, mm -hmm. from the same center where this happened, where this operation is done. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we didn't get much of, um, you know, comments on this, um, but, but I was questioning exactly the position of the, even the, the, the uh, if you can see the, uh, uh, the, um, the valve and also the, uh, the, um, the valve salva. Uh, I mean, it's a uh, sinus of valve It's also um, not, not very clear. It might be also related to that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.